Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Challenge 40 Battle of the Eras Wrap Up Podcast for the Era 4 Preview. I am Brian Cohen. With me, as always, is my co host, Alex. How are you? I cannot believe we've reached the end of what is like a very big preview season for us. Yeah. Considering we don't really ever do any sort, we're doing four parts, four hours. This is, you know, infinity times longer than it normally is. So here we are. We're here. We're doing it. We're in era f- three. So uh, uh, in era four, the most recent contestants, people that are probably like the most, mostly, mostly very familiar to the audience. So we have a much smaller, much lighter lift, I would say, for this era. Much smaller lift. Uh, as much as the, you know, season 39 was battle of a new champions. I think, you know, era four looking for a champion, only two in the mix, a lot of fun faces, a lot of fun dynamics. Um, ready to get into this group. All right, let's do it. Share your graphic. I was very uh, I was hit the zoom in on Brian photo first. <laughs> My favorite on era four days. We wear pink. Yes. Mm-hmm. I dressed for the era. Dress for success here. Seasons 31 to 39. Uh, one less season to cover, all the rest covering 10. But, you know, the most people still hungry to be playing and active in uh, in the franchise. Yeah, a lot of uh, faces. Obviously, the, the big differentiator here, we got a taste of it uh, in Era 3 with the dropping in of uh, Are You The One? But obviously, with Era 4, big CBS contingent and obviously a big international contingent that really is kind of the key uh those are the key factors it's cbs international is uh what makes up uh era four here yeah and it is interesting to see them when when we've seen like the challenge make full seasons based on like international uh folks joining i was surprised to see only two brits uh in this cast. And I guess we'll talk about that more at the end when we go through the great stewards charts. But Mm -hmm. I I was a little surprised that we didn't see more international folks. It's really heavy on the, on the CBS. Really heavy on CBS and in particular, big brother, obviously, you know, we'll get to it, but just Michelle is the CV is the survivor uh, contingent. We got four uh, big brother people. Um, And obviously there's some reasons for like the UK people, why some of them, you know, if you if you were casting the season ahead of time in like season thirty four, there probably would be some more UK people. Now there are not, um, for some obvious reasons. And you know, here we are left with uh, Theo. It's the big. It's the uh, CBS Love Island USA erasure for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, with Olivia, you always forget that. But we remember we watched Olivia when she was. Uh, unlikable and then somehow won the season spoiler alert okay um let's let's talk about the person who i think is the biggest sort of not surprise but more surprising return of mm-hmm. sort of the era four and for me that's polly califiore as Ooh, well, i did not say i did not think that was gonna be the name you were gonna say but um, isn't he kind of the biggest surprise like before you knew polly was gonna be on this season so he would have been uh I guess so, but I feel like the Jenny, <laughs> the Jenny of it all, I feel like kind of trumps. But more it. surprise and like I don't know that I ever thought Polly would be <laughs> back on the show. I guess so, but he appeared I know on Challenge USA, USA too, but just like so that nah. takes the sting out of it. Um but yeah, I think Jenny to me is the more surprising. Yeah, but yeah, Polly it's very fun to have him back in the proper mix. Well, you know, when he left, he was like one of the top dogs. He was very close to winning a couple seasons, nearly died in a final, had a very tragic exit one of his other seasons, uh, you know, when he couldn't do one of the last purges. So it's going to be very fun to see him back with Kara and seeing how them back together, obviously on separate teams, back together in this season, what type of target that they have as uh, I think the only couple on the, the whole the, the season. Wow, we're about to talk about another couple on this very era. I forgot. Form. Yes, I forgot about that. Yes, <laughs> um, this, the, we're the only two couples on the show. Uh, but yeah, it's, it, he definitely is on the earlier range of this era, starting in season 32 and then stopped kind of on the earlier side of the era too. It's not like he's been, made a run all the way through. I Theo is similar to that. Um, 
What's interesting to me is like in, you know, 2024, in July 2024, we are hearing rumors that Cara and Polly have split and they're trying to reconcile and whatever. I don't have any reason to believe that that happened during filming of this. So it will be interesting to see them as a couple if like the internet discourse around the season is, but now they're broken up. Um, and yeah, before USA 2, and maybe this neuters his surprise, but like, uh, or reduces it is like I would have said he's coming in with a lot of baggage with a lot of people, but we mm-hmm. definitely saw a different Polly uh, come on Very USA much. too. Like even with bananas, um, you know, one of the things that was popping off in the chat and popping off on Twitter is like the big fight that Polly and Theo had on World of Worlds two one whatever, mm-hmm. um, and like. It was just like a real machismo like fight over Theo making a comment about Polly, uh, Kyle slept with your girl or whatever. And then Polly gave Theo a little smooch. It was one of the more ridiculous fights that we've seen Mm -hmm. on the challenge. Now we're going to see them work together. I really have no reason to believe that they still have issues just because, again, Polly is so reformed and it's been such a long time. Yeah. I mean, obviously, like you said, very much a reformed Polly. And I think like, it's a key point that if he was coming in fresh, I think his prospects for this season would be far lower than they are. But the fact that he was able to use USA two and his like uh, post game interviews almost as like a cleansing of like a lot of the things that he had built up, I think really opens himself up. I think the, the, the X factor though is like, is, is Kara there? Like, I think if he was here on his own without Kara, it would seem like he almost would have a better chance maybe of like integrating back in, but obviously him and Kara, we would think through this season would be very much a uh, lockstep together, but who knows? Maybe that, that is what leads to something that, that obviously happens between them afterwards. I don't know, but I think that's going to be like the big X factor is how everyone else reacts to Kara and then the poly collateral damage of it all. So that's interesting. I almost think that's giving like Laurel and that side of things, like the older generation of issues from all stars, like too much say in this like full scope of 40. Like, could I see Polly like being a good team member of era four and then Kara it's like era four and Kara hanging out. Like, I don't really know the latest on where bananas and Kara stand, but I, I, I don't know that it's like automatically going to be everyone versus Kara like it was on All Stars with so much like new blood and with Polly being baked into this era four. No, not maybe. necessarily. Yeah, no, I don't think it's necessarily going to be everyone against Kara, but it, there's there's very rare seasons where it's like a lot of people for Kara. Like there are, it, she's usually getting a lot of hate. And yeah, but that, that's yeah. that's bad blood. Put her on bad blood because mm-hmm. like. Now, if we look at this, right, and we'll talk about it person by person, but if we take an overview of, like, the biggest story on Era 4, right, it's it's Norris and Olivia, like, Norris, Kylan, and Horacio being the Caras of Battle for a New Champion, and Michelle and Olivia, and wherever Devin and Tori and they fall into, and, like, it is going to be an interesting battle of, like, whose feuds is the bigger story. Like where will the alliances fall amongst the crevices or cracks, whatever that already exist. And so, yeah, it's a, it's a very good point. Obviously that Kara usually flops on the wrong side of the numbers and it's usually her as a one. And it certainly was that on all stars with these people, but you know, who knows what the biggest story of the day is going to be. And are there, is there room for Kara in the like, Norris Kyland Horacio contingent of like Horacio likes to run with the best and be the best. And like Kara is one of the best female competitors. And we're also misunderstood misfits like per snaps. I mean, right. or Kara goes on for it. But like, I think that there, this might be like the best possibility for Kara to have 40 people to kind of pick from mm-hmm. and hopefully find a few connections. Yeah. And it's going to be, it, it, this season is going to be like a big test of like how real are some of the feuds. I think usually on like a rival season when people are hated together and they're paired, there's a question of like, all right, do they actually hate each other or are they just going to be able to work together just fine? And I think for like that, Olivia, Norris, Horacio, Michelle, Quartet, like most likely they're not, they're really going to need each other in this game and they're really going to have to work together. And it's going to be a real question of like, all right, was their feud and spillover from 39 like legitimate and they actually do kind of like, there's a lot of hate within that group or 
are they able to just be like, actually, you know what? Definitely for this season, like we have to work together. This is insane. Like we, we're putting everything behind us, and the four of us have to be like a strong four block on on this team. I forgot to get something. I took critical notes. Oh shoot! <laughs> I hate video <laughs> podcasts. They're in my other shorts. All right, riff, Brian, riff. I think the other, you know, we got four CBS Big Brother people, all from like varying kind of walks. I think it's gonna be interesting if Paulie and Josh uh, squash their beef, so we would think they'd be close together. Casey doesn't really have beef with anyone, so she could probably just like coast along. And Kyle. All right, well like, now you're talking about the whole season. That's not yeah, riff of the whole everyone's connections. Gosh, don't you know how to riff? Okay, I, re- I really don't. I have critical notes, which is a video that dropped today that I put in the challenge Facebook group about um, girlies watching and Kylan and Horacio were watching uh, Norris betray Olivia. So I do have a little bit of insight of like where they're at least projecting that they stand before the season, but we'll get to that. Let's go to Theo. We're talking about Polly. We're talking about Kara, another person whose most recent season in the challenge proper franchise was War of the Worlds 2, originally from Love Island, UK. And interestingly, it was not on, like, the challenge UK. Like, we don't have people. Mm-hmm. Was Jenny? I don't think so, right? We don't have people who were on, like, that challenge spinoff. Yeah. Yeah, Theo's, I think Theo would have been a name that if he popped up here for the first time, this would have been like, oh, wow, Theo's back. But Theo came back in uh usa 2 and i think the uh the star really fizzled quite out uh at least on the edited version i think there was a lot of talk of like oh theo was like very much involved in a lot of stuff he was funny he was in some drama and like a lot of that was just like cut it it could be true could not be true i don't know from what we saw he was kind of a nothing burger uh, on usa 2 um so I kind of almost want to erase that from my memory and think back to how excited I was when I saw Theo on that cast and put that excitement onto this cast because Theo was one of the more, you know, ascending personalities of this show before his freak accident. So if we can kind of get back to that version of him, that would be a lot of fun. Yeah, I agree. And I uh, personally have no problem forgetting everything that happened on World Championship. Um, And in fact, I was, when I was doing my notes for this, like, oh my God, Theo's back, like his eye, blah, blah, blah. And then I was like, oh, he has been on another season. So I have already accomplished the uh, men in black style erasure of (laughs) of world championship. No problem. Um, But yeah, Theo, I think it's, he's definitely an, uh, an athlete and someone who's only lost to Jordan in elimination. Granted, that's of like two or three seasons, Mm -hmm. but He's also somebody who's in the mix for drama. Like we mentioned that that Polly fight, he like totally instigated that like, kind of for no reason. Um, he hooked up with Cam, which I, I want to say like reinvigorated the spark between Cam and Leroy. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think there's any beef there just from like how Leroy is as a person. But um, he's been in, I think he's in a relationship now. I don't know what the current status is as he goes into this. Um, but he's been known for hookup drama. He's been known for fighting. He's been known for his athletic prowess. And that's only across two seasons of challenge proper. So definitely Theo, a rising star in the franchise. If we all forget world championship, which again, no problem here. Yeah. And I, and even though the, the luster is off this, this era would feel light if we didn't have like a UK male kind of representing that group. And I think obviously, there are some people that obviously would never be on the show and some people like couldn't be on the show. So I'm glad we had someone who could and is on this show just to represent how important the UK, you know, infusion was, especially in like the mid to early thirties. So I, I am for that reason alone, I'm glad we have Theo. Uh, let's complete the rest of the UK infusion um, in Jenny, who I guess is your biggest surprise, most exciting person on this season. Couldn't see this season without her. No, I'm just kidding. I I am also excited to see Jenny. Um, She's been in sort of alternate consideration for a couple of seasons and hasn't sort of broken through again since she appeared on World of the Worlds 2 and won Total Madness. So I I think it's it's well-deserved here. Uh, If not 40, another season that she just has missed. So I'm happy to see her back. Yeah, she's like very much in that like Emily Strom like stat level of like only a couple seasons has a win, um, has one very notable 
uh, elimination loss to to Tori, which I'm sure she very much wants like a redo of, and I'm sure is going to be clamoring. Like she's not the biggest like personality uh, on the screen, but I would imagine if I had to guess, a lot of her early confessionals are going to be, I want the redo against Tori. Like I want the you know right my wrong from that from that moment. So I feel like that's going to be like the biggest overarching theme from least beginning versions of, of Jenny. And then, you know, however the season may go from there, but I feel like that's going to be like her thing is wanting the revenge on like the elimination loss to Tori. Yeah, and it is interesting. A person like Jenny, who it's not like a vintage person who's back like a Jody or even a Vive, who's like, it's been a long time and maybe they're just here for 40 or maybe they want all stars or maybe they do want to get back in the proper mix. Jenny is somebody who really did kill it physically in her first two appearances. Again, was uh, an alternate twice. Definitely wants to be back in the proper mix, has the physical prowess to do it, but had a taste of what it felt like to be passed over for a number of seasons. So could she be coming back like more aware of what she's got to do from like a drama perspective or just like hungrier to like really not let this like nom style second chance that's not fair mm -hmm. to her. she's done a lot more than him but like you know another casting appearance when she could have really been forgotten about is she gonna like really be hungry to make her mark on this season more so than she did in madness when she won so that's right we'll see um and she's on the team of people who know how to how to make a scene but before we get to those people let's go to casey and then to josh and then we'll get to the battle for the new champion era folks uh who are kind of an era in their own right in <laughs> just season 39 um i will say and i apologize to casey wonderful competitor but i was talking to someone today and i was like we we're talking about era four and he was like i don't know if i love era four and i was like let me remember who's on it i just did my prep this morning and i named every single person immediately from memory and i could not think of casey and then he gave me two hints and I still could not think of Casey and I had to look it up. And that's crazy for someone who has been a staple of era four, who I simply could not imagine era four without her. I could not recall her. That is a perfect encapsulation of Casey on the show. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is what her like fifth, I think it says, is this her fifth or sixth seasons? And then by the time she this premiered her fifth season plus world championship. So once she started, she, has been on almost every challenge proper season she can be on besides uh battle for new champion because she is a champion. So she couldn't be on that season. Um, yeah, she's not the most jump out of your face character. Like she never has been, never will be. Let's but, go. But for a reality competition show, usually that works out pretty well. Like she goes very far. Uh, she obviously very strong eliminations has a win came close to a couple other ones could easily win this season also and will probably be forgotten about when she's cast for season 41 because she's that's just her personality now i will say i did let one like i don't know eternal sunship the spotless spot. like i did like save like a couple memories of world championship before i flushed them all and if i'm not mistaken world championship i think we both felt was her best like appearance popping off screen of the season she went to eliminations like she was in the mix i feel like that was like a big talking point from her last appearance now could i and be that was using it with anything that was also, i could be could be but that was also a season without um nani right and now she's again with also without nani so maybe not having nani and like that like her being focused on her obviously you know opens her up I mean, she, I mean, she was, she was without Nadia on Big Brother. She wasn't really a big personality there either. But, you know, there is other ways for her to pop on screen now. That's not just like her relationship with, with Nadia. And I'll say like her relationship with Nani was some of the best parts of her being on the show. And like they've gotten engaged since I was like actually unable to really find out what Nani's been up to since their engagement. I think they got engaged last year, but um yeah, I mean, I, I'm, i like, optimistic despite how low I came in talking about that I couldn't remember her on the season. I do remember the last time we saw her being like, wow, this is kind of, like, the highest I've been on her. Um, so maybe we're going to continue on through that trajectory. She'll be an interesting kind of counterbalance to, like, I think Casey and Jenny are a very interesting counterbalance to the Nerissa, Olivia, Michelle, like, 
drama section of sure. the team. And I also think like Horacio will have a lot has slash will have a lot of love and respect for like Casey and Jenny just as athletes. So I just think there's like some interesting things happening in this era uh, or there's potential for some very interesting things to happen on this era with Casey. 100%. Um, but let's go to Josh. Uh, very close friend of Casey's, also a big brother person, also a big brother winner, big brother 19, originally joined us on War of the Worlds season 33, uh, last seen on Spies, Lies, and Allies, and USA 2. Um, one interesting thing about Josh, Brian, before we talk about his just, personality. Just the one. Just the yeah, one. Just, just one before we go on, go in on the rest of the stuff with Josh. Josh has won one elimination out of the six that he has been in. Yeah. Do you remember who Josh beat in an elimination? So I know what he won. And it, even in the win, he came across looking quite bad because he had to like throw a ball, like a big like medicine ball type thing at targets. And he, there was like, it was dodo music in his elimination win. The question of who he beat, I'll say this for a million dollars and my life. I wouldn't be able to get this. What what season was it? It was double agents. I feel like it was like, it was one of like the random like partners of like a challenger. Like, was it like Laurel's like friend or something like that? That he, no, he didn't win though. It was, it um, wasn't, but you're on the right track, but again, like, you're never going to get it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't picture it. But it's it definitely rhymes, someone who was never going to see again. It rhymes with the name of like a, a blood sucking insect. <laughs> Jesus. Um, blood that you might find with, in the lake. Um, oh, like a leech. So it rhymes with leech? <laughs> sort of. <M> Meech? <laughs> Peach? Yeah. Yeah, or Reach? or it rhymes with a fruit that's like a fun martini. So it rhymes with peach. It's Michi. Michi. <laughs> who is Michi? <laughs> Michi certainly made his mark on X on the Beach by contributing to plenty of drama, but now claims he's ready to rein it in. And then he was on Double Agents, lost to Josh like immediately. And let's see who's on his team. I just laughed so hard when I saw he lost to Michi that I like stopped looking at anything. I forget what was even the format of Double Agents. Like I'll just search Michi. Well, did it, like they, that was when they got to pick their partner, right? And, and CT said no to Cam, and then they got to switch partners every time they won elimination. Oh yeah, so he was originally partnered with Amber M. Oh, classic Amber M. Yeah, from Are You the One? Uh, I think season eight fame. And then yeah, and Josh then, and then, beat him. And then Amber was part of quite possibly the worst elimination <laughs> round of all time. Well, look, we'll talk about that when we get to the miscat oh, people we're missing from, from this era. I know we're certainly sure. missing uh we, we could be missing an Amber, but not Amber M. So what what are your thoughts on Josh? What what's your what are your feelings on Josh coming in here? Josh, he's so complicated because I'm not as extreme as other people that see Josh's name and they want to like throw up in disgust to see him on a season. Because I honestly do think he fits in this era. Because for better or worse, kind of like how like people hate Tori, but for better or worse, like she's like the face of that era. Obviously, Josh is not nearly to the, like the level of physicality that Tori is, but for better or for worse, Josh is kind of the face of like the CBS infusion, for lack of a better word. I can't think of a better word than infusion. Um, for in the challenge, like he was one of the first to do it. He's been like one of the most long lasting. His physicality has gotten a little bit better, I guess. Um, his social game has gotten, I think, better. Is, is he gonna win? No, but he's gonna be in the mix of stuff, and I think that's more you can say than some other people. And again, like, I, I don't mind Josh's presence on this season as like a foil to others as a lot of other people. Look, once again, you know, jo I just looked it up. Josh made it to episode 15 of his last season pro of, of, the, of the challenge. And I'm pretty sure it's like in the same vein as Fessel. 
Josh's stock has, is rising. Like, not as a potential winner per se, though I probably would have said the same thing about Devin. But in in the sense of like, I'm also not upset about Josh coming back. And I'm almost positive we talked about it or I talked about it on his last few appearances. Like, Josh has improved from a television perspective a thousandfold in my mind. And I am very interested to see him navigate his friendship with Amanda, his relationships with like the Tori and Devin, and possibly the big brother relationships with the Casey and Kylan and Pauly and like sort of where the new era big brother people fit with the old era big brother people. Um, so I think there's a lot of like social interest around where Josh is going to go this season. I do think he has a lot of opportunities here, especially spreading between eras three and four. And I also think it's going to be interesting because it's going to cause a lot of pressure. I think, I think that's has happened with him and Amanda before where like mm -hmm. he wants to ride for Amanda, but no one's riding for Amanda. And that puts him in a weird spot when he's better social position than her. So, and he doesn't handle that pressure super well. So I think yep. it's going to be very, very interesting to see him with 40 people um, trying to, you know, keep promises and like overextend of like who he's protecting and who he's been pre-gaming with. So I'm very, very excited to see Josh here. And I agree with you that he certainly fits the theme. And it's not that any of these connections are going to help him, but his Josh, I feel like is very swayed by people's perception of him in like the, in like the audience, like how fans are perceiving him and his pers fan perception, I don't think has ever been higher than post reindeer games. I think, that was probably his most popular. I was just going to say that <laughs> on any show ever. So I genuinely think that that just gives him like just a little bit more of like a confidence builder going in of like, I have more fans rallying behind me that want to see me do well, that maybe that could give him a little extra boost to actually do well in this show. Slay. Get it. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, let's move on to sort of the newest Brig brother edition in Kyland. Yeah. Kyland, uh, made his challenge proper debut, um, 39. So this is just his second challenge proper season. The first playing with a lot of people, obviously he's not a stranger to the reality competition world coming from big brother. Um, he did very well. Uh, on 39, especially in TJ's eyes. I think TJ is going to have his uh, ripe of the pickings of all of his favorites. I don't know how he's going to choose between I'm all sorry, his kids. I'm sorry, what? His ripe of the pickings. His that, that's... ripe of the pickings? You mean his like pick? It's ripe pick for the, the litter? picking? That pick of the litter? It, I it's ripe, ripe for the picking. His... Mark it down, Mike Bloom, out of the clouds. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of your best ones. <laughs> ripe got, for the pickings. He's got Leroy. As his child, he's got Horacio, <laughs> he's got Kylan. Wait, Leroy is Kylan's child? TJ, TJ, oh, TJ. TJ. Okay, I'm sorry. TJ. <laughs> so he's got that support. Um, to <laughs> TJ in the mix. You would think I would learn to speak more as I go through these, but I no, it's late. I, I do not. Um, but he's another one that like the, his popularity off 39, I feel like, is pretty high for the perception of him. And Horacio's kind of had that balancing act of like off 38 into 39. And then he had to deal with like balancing that. I'm curious to see how Kylan does balancing the fans loving him post 39 into 40. If that affects his gameplay in any way. So you're the big brother person uh, here. And all I really, I think I watched the beginning of the season 23, but I didn't go through to the end. Mm -hmm. Um, but I did like catch wind on TikTok of or Twitter of like the clip of like Kylan making like comments about X's nephew and like using that against him and you know, whatever. And so I had just like such a bad perception of Kylan based on that. I'm like, that's too personal. That's beyond the game. You know, like we've had this debate, be it bananas and Devin about Devin's dad or Kylan and X about X's nephew. I was just like, that's bad sportsmanship. And that's, I don't like it. Right. Um, and then Kylan had such a good, like Nelson style reverence for the game and really, I think won people over in USA too. And then certainly, and by people, I mean like maybe challenge fans who don't watch big brother. And then, um, I could just speak for myself and then, um, into his positioning on battle for the new champion. I mean, it's like hard to imagine. I think Horacio 
is a perfect comparison because he's coming out of that season the golden boy for the challenge. He was on the co- sort of like right side of the numbers in terms of who the fans were rooting for at the end of the day with Horacio and Norris and Kylan and the underdog and being sweet with Mel and talking about um, being on the spectrum and just like, wow, what a, what a great showing for Kylan. And he's got really great athletic potential and strategic potential. I do just like, there's like that last, there's one like, detonator he could always drop like he did with x so there's like high drama potential too which is important and we see him macking it with i think naya in the preview so he's gonna be in the mix so i i think he's poised to just have another like baller season can he win yet i'm not sure but can Mm -hmm. he perform athletically and for cameras absolutely he just brought help bring the phrase macking it back so (laughs) You know, he's a big winner already. Not him taking credit for, for my success, for my successes. I didn't take credit for his successes on the last season. I'd like to trade our successes if it's compared to his performance on 39 and me saying Mac in it after the <laughs> trade. I'm not just giving it away. Mm. Um, and, like, notably, he beat Darrell and Brad. I think you you made a good point that they weren't, like, super, super physical competitions, but, like, TJ has a right to be impressed. Like he brought some of his top boys in and Kylan mm-hmm. defeated them. So right for the picking. Yeah. Ripe, ripe of the picking. I think you said, all right. Um, you know, you're ever talking about these people and I'm like, Oh, Kylan, whatever. Then I talk about it. And I like turn myself into like his biggest fan. I'm just so persuasive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, to pierce the alley lasher brain. <laughs> Let's go to uh, Horacio, his Kylan's partner in crime. Uh, used to be Olivia's ride or die. That's when we first met Horacio. Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess Olivia chose die. <laughs> <laughs> I think Horacio would have chosen die also. So yeah, they both uh, they both separated. New ride or die for Horacio in um, Norris. Horacio, though, is kind of the male equivalent, I think, of Casey at this point, of very strong competitor, could probably do very well, make a final, maybe even win a season. Unlikely to produce things that's going to be memeable or clippable or funnable. Like, that's not his vibe. But he has Norris there that if anyone, you know, pushes towards Horacio, Norris is going to be the one that pushes the memeable and the clippable and the, the funnable moment. So he has that at least, which makes him a, a worthwhile contestant. Yeah, I think what's exciting about Horacio with respect to him and Norris being a couple on the season is like it's almost like early Jordan and Tori. If like because Horacio has like the athletic skills of Jordan with the personality of a baby angel, mm-hmm. and Norris. Also has the athletic skills, perhaps, of Tori remains to be seen, but what we've seen so far is extremely impressive. And, like, the mouth of Jordan, you know? like So, like, it's a much more likable distribution of the personalities, like, that I think it's, like, I'm really excited for them to be sort of, like, the next big couple of the Challenge franchise. And I do think that Horacio... Like, Norris has rubbed off on him a little bit because in that video, which the challenge shared on Twitter, one of the things that was most interesting to me about it is when they're showing a clip of, like, Michelle saying, uh, like, I'm trying to, like, she was, like, trying to think about who she was going to make. It was, like, the scene where they're picking the safety chain. And she's, like, I'm trying to decide something. And Horacio just goes, trying to see how fake she's going to be. I was like, Horacio, come to Michelle. So there's a little like uh, mm-hmm. drama starting up in him, a little fire. There is. There could be. Hopefully some more. It also is interesting. Obviously, their, their love blossomed on 39. So this will be the first season they're actually fully coming in together as like a paired uh, threat. They didn't have that uh, you know, perception of them going into 39. It really wasn't. Until really post thirty nine. I mean, I guess during thirty nine they got close, but it was really like after thirty nine that their you know relationship really uh, hit the pedal to the metal. So it'll be it's a different dynamic for the two of them coming in together as a pair rather than like building towards being a pair. 
Yeah, and I think part of the problem for Nerese on 39 was, yeah, she came in with a plan. She came in with certain relationships with Jay and Olivia and Michelle. And then she built an organic loyalty to Horacio and then sort of via Horacio Kyland. And so, like, she was starting to get perceived as a pair with him, but she was already in, mm -hmm. you know, an alliance of four, five, six. So... I think, yeah, her her kind of allegiances are more clear cut here. So she's maybe not going to be so much in the middle and having to like turn against one side. I think she is kind of coming in with her biggest alliance um, highlighted. Hopefully it goes better than it did with Jay when she came in last season with Jay as her number one. Everyone has a plan until they fall in love. That's the old <laughs> quote, right? That's the Mike Tyson quote. Uh. Yeah, I don't know. But let's talk about Norris from Are You the One, season six. As we said, Ride or Die, season 38. The battle for new champion was on 39. And I will say for this only being her third season of the challenge, she's possibly coming in with some of the most potential for drama. And God bless how much work she's done here between the Jordan, Tori of it all. So on her first season, she hooked up with Jordan which was, I think, Tori and Jordan's, like, first season back on a season together after mm -hmm. breaking up. So, like, kind of crazy decision for Jordan. But uh, I, I'm pretty sure that's more or less squashed. But who knows? Mm -hmm. She um, is dating Horacio, and she's got the residual question marks with Olivia and Michelle. And... Let's not forget that the source of the issue between Olivia and Nerys is Anissa hooking up with Nerys's brother and spilling beans. So I don't know where Anissa and Nerys's brother stand, where Anissa and Olivia stand. So like, there's just a lot that Nerys is at the center of. Yeah, you can make a case uh, that Nerys's target might be the biggest of of anyone coming into this season. Even oh, that's wild. Make that case. Because obviously she doesn't have the winning pedigree that other people have, but she's in the position almost that, you know, we talked about it in our era three uh, podcast with Tori, how once she started to like build a reputation for herself before like winning anything, people started to push back against it. And then she kind of became hated as if she already was like a multi-time champion and like the face of the show. And Narice is, especially like 39, she came out of that being like, all right, Norris is the new female face of the show. Like this is hers. And I feel like now that she's in the mix with the prior female faces of the show in Tori and Kara and Laurel, even going back to like a Rachel, I think there could be some animosity and pushback of being like, we're, we're the stars of the show. Norris, she's got, she could get there down the road, but like, this is still our time. And then the couple that with the fact that she is, Paired with Horacio, who is one of the biggest physical threats on the show and doesn't have people from across eras defending her. Like, no one, not many people are going to be like going to back and dying for Norris. Like, there could be a big contingent of being like, let's just go after Norris, split up her and Horacio, and then like take our show back almost. So that's interesting. You said there's a case. You certainly made the case. So very, very convincing. Thank you. I still think I don't know how many people on this cast total have even watched 39, to be honest. Like, I don't mm. think a lot of these people watch the seasons they're not on, like the more recent people and the older people. I, I think that's part of why the challenge released a video of, like, them watching this scene. I don't even know when this was filmed. I think it, aired, I think it was filmed after 39 aired. Um, so they could have watched. I just don't think they do. Um, and I also think just like her size is going to still stay in her favor because she's still pretty small. And I think that people just judge things based on size sometimes, depending on how the eliminations mm -hmm. work. And I think Horacio, like pissing Horacio off is something you're not going to want to do, like pissing Jordan off something you didn't want to do with Tori. So like, would they rather take a shot at like a Michelle who's got, I think, a broader reputation for like being a snake on some of the seasons that some of these people were actually on as opposed to 39? Like maybe. Mm -hmm. um, I think the case you made is exactly right. Like they should be threatened by Norris and Norris should be one of the first targets. I just don't know that she will be. I also think like Horacio, depending on what they know about Horacio, but he'll probably make this clear 
has the attitude of like someone either dumb enough, cocky enough, or noble enough to like want to beat the best. And he'll go to the end with some of these bigger people. And maybe on this season, like some of the bigger threats will feel like, well, I'd rather last a long time and have people who are willing to take me to the end. Um, so yeah, it could really go either way. Like it, it mm -hmm. will be very interesting to, interesting to see. But one thing I'll say for Norris too is she has really impressed me in changing from Ari the One to her most recent season, The Challenge, in that, like, even if these people do piss her off or if they go for Horacio or whatever, like, she'll be – she'll kill them with kindness. Like, I feel like she'll be cool to their face like she did when she found out the information about Olivia via her brother, via Hanisa. Like, mm -hmm. she uses things when they are – what you say, ripe for the picking? No, you said picking for the – Whatever. Ripe, ripe, of, of the ripe, pickings. Of, ripe of the picking. She'll use it when it's ripe of the pickings and and spring into action. So she's not going to like melt down or anything, at least such she did on 39. And I think that's going to really serve her well in the house. And I can't wait to see how this shakes out, RuPaul meme. <sighs> Who do you want, Olivia or Michelle? Let's do Olivia next and let's save um, the, the 40 queen for, uh, for <laughs> Michelle. Um, Olivia coming off 38 was like kind of in like that Kylan spot a little bit of like being like the fan favorite darling could have been a ripe of the picking of TJ's favorite. Um, obviously had the freak accident with the eye bounce back or the nose, I should say, or both probably. Um, and <laughs> then boy, oh boy, did the star uh, collapse mightily. Uh, as we moved our way through to 39 to the point where I think she was probably one of the more hated uh, contestants, at least in the fan base, to the point where people hated her so much they never wanted to see her again, which is a wild thing to think about for reality contestants. But I'm very fun that very fun that she is back. And the best way to get like guaranteed to come back is to be talked about that much and hated that much, right? right? You need the West as much as you need the hero. Kind of similar though to like how rivals. Um, doesn't always produce the drama that the show is hoping for. I am not a super... F I wish there was the next season of Norris and Olivia where they weren't on a team and desperately needed to work together. Like, if this was a normal season, like, 41 of the show and, like, there was a lot of other things going on, we could see them, like, building coalitions to go against each other. And maybe season 40 will get to that point. But if it gets to that point, then they've had an incredible season that they've, like lasted so long in the game that they could build coalitions go at each other because it I, I just can't see a scenario where if they're both still in the game past the midpoint they haven't worked through all of their issues and they're like best friends working together so tightly so i wish we had more of them like going against each other because it if that happens it's going to be episode one two and three and one of them is going to like get eliminated and that's going to be the end the end of it which could be fun but we're not going to have a more season arching arc of what that could be like so what I will say from my sense from the video is to the extent that it's helpful. And I think this was sort of like consistent with the reunion and maybe Twitter where Olivia really wasn't saying much, like mixing it up, like, and Norris was, you know, letting the air out of the balloon of how upset she was. So like my sense is Olivia is coming in here semi hat in hand. Like I made a mistake, right? Like the mistake for anyone who didn't watch 39 is she cut a deal with the devil, Michelle. I don't think Michelle is the devil. I'm just saying she cut a deal with the devil, Jay and Michelle, and said, save me in the safety chain and I will save Mariah, thus putting Norris in jeopardy with Horacio and Kylan. So Olivia is at least saying, you've got to watch this video, everyone. She's being grilled by Amanda. They're basically showing Amanda what happened. And Amanda is like, oh, so Michelle manipulated you and you blew it up. And like, it's just like so funny to see Amanda's perspective. But in any event, Olivia is like, I made the wrong decision. I should have chosen Norris. I thought she'd be safe, blah, blah, blah. I've apologized and actions will speak louder than words. So I think regardless of the format, Olivia doesn't really have anywhere else to go. And so she's coming back like, my friendship with Norris matters more to me. And I'm going to use the season to demonstrate that I can build trust. So certainly the format perhaps if they're on the same team, certainly perhaps it facilitates that in a way that might be more fun if it didn't facilitate that. But I, I do think that that's where Olivia wants to go. I don't think Olivia would come in on a normal season and like build this whole campaign. Cause I don't really think she has the social capital coming out yeah. of that season. Yeah, no, all, 
all completely fair. Um, and I think Olivia is also very much, I feel like, a self self purpose. I can't think of the right phrase. Self purpose thinker. Like she wants to create a better ch- like challenge environment for herself, and she knows how much she was hated post thirty nine, and she knows the popularity of Norris and Horacio. So I think she's going to try to like really worm her way back in with them and hopefully in turn like worm her way back in with the fans because I do think she she couldn't be happy with how much like the fans base turned on her post 39 and I think she wants to like flip that perception back to where it was 30 and from 38. So I think getting back on Norris's good side and you know almost being like a fallen soldier for her or like being like her her right-hand woman uh through this season it would be like a way to do that. Yeah, she perhaps has more to gain to fall on her sword to build trust for future seasons. Like, she's certainly not in the Jenny camp of, like, even if she goes out third trying to save Norris, she'll be back on another season. Totally. So she she has more to gain, possibly, to kind of, like, make it up to her fallen rider dies. Um, I totally agree with that. Um, let's go on to Michelle. Here for her fourth time, and then if you count USA 2, fifth time, uh, winner of Survivor Co. Wrong. And I think most interestingly is that Michelle is here without her ride or die, Jay, who is her ride or die, not just on ride or dies, but in prior seasons. And they've mm-hmm. had a very interesting dynamic of Michelle effing up the game for Jay and then Jay effing up the game for Michelle. And now we see Michelle sans Jay. Yes, we see Michelle without Jay, but we see Michelle. Um, with Laurel and Kara, who each had a lot of fun at Michelle's expense as the uh, the mercenaries popping in in 39. Continued a little bit through the reunion as well. Doesn't seem like they're on the best of terms. The one thing Michelle might have going for her is that Laurel and Kara are themselves not on the best of terms, and there's a lot of other, you would think, bigger fish to fry than little, little, little Michelle over here. And Michelle's superpower is just weaseling her way into groups being likable building those bonds so unless it's like episode one and like laurel wins complete power and it's like you know what screw it i'm going after michelle there's a there's a world that michelle can make laurel friendly with her make Kara friendly with her or like turn laurel and Kara against each other even more and you know just avoid the avoid the smoke that you know she might see coming her way that that is her her total superpower and she's going to need to use that in full force to, you know, withstand some of the pressure she's going to face early on for sure. Yeah. Amanda also someone she's had, you know, Fessel related bad blood with reunion, bad blood with like, I think it's what is um, another one of uh, Michelle's superpowers is that she's able to kind of like take someone yelling at her and being like, you're right. Here's why I did this. Or like, she owns things better than I think a lot of people on the challenge. I think you watch her season of the challenge, even when she's playing the game wrong and she has the wrong reads, you totally can see why she won her season of survivor because she just is really, really good at kind of talking through things, even if she doesn't have a reason. And it's just kind of like her giving burn of the runaround, right? Like she'll talk until she's said something that is working in the situation. I think her coming in without Jay is like the best case scenario for her here. But I just think, and she has one of the worst reputations of a modern era four player in terms of trustworthiness. Like, Earned or not earned, like there are some people she's been loyal to who think she's a snake, and there's some people she's snaked who scream that she's a snake. So I don't know how she's going to be able to shed the like or spin her reputation, but I think it's it's pretty poor. And again, from the gameplay perspective, not from like a people liking her mm-hmm. perspective. Yep. You know that said, enter Devin. Yeah. Even if it's just a friendship that develops, right? And her getting in with sort of the most trustworthy alliance and Tori and Anissa and Casey, like maybe that's Michelle's best case scenario for the season. And honestly, even beyond like the relationship with Devin, Devin's like the same level of comp of for a moment in time, like a like partway through Devin's challenge career, he was like the super snake. You can't be trusted. He's the weasel. He's going to do all these different things. And then through time, he built friendships, built bonds, and he still is kind of thought of as like the shady guy, but he's not thought of as like the the weasel that he was 
uh, you know, two or three seasons into his challenge career, the way Michelle is now. So this season could be like that turning point switch if for Michelle, if she is able to like really just take a step back and not try to like let some of the power player women, let Laurel and Kara and some of the other like women that will really want to like run the let let them do that. Like let let them do that. The the smoke will come for them at some point. Michelle needs to focus on building the bonds from like the era three women that you know, like, come back for the forties plus and like just building those connections and rebuilding things with Olivia and things like that. Focus on that. And then I think that'll carry her into this game. And I think that's what she did great on 39. And that's where Jay kind of like blew up her game by playing yeah. sort of different sides of the fence. Right. But she nurtured the relationship with Corey. She nurtured the relationship with Berna. Like she nurtured the relationship with the girls. Like, so she had her hands in a bunch of pots and just, unfortunately Jay had his hands in different pots and, you know, kind of blew it up. So um, she's definitely good at that. Uh, just a few other interesting things from the video about these people. Like Olivia has not yet confronted Anissa about what happened with the Narice of it all. So that'll be interesting. Um, and again, Amanda just basically it was Kylan, Narice, and Horacio watching together. And then separately, Olivia, Michelle, and Amanda. So Amanda's just heckling bo uh, both Olivia and Michelle the entire time. The video ends with the producer cutting them off because it's escalating too much with Amanda and Michelle. Amanda's out of control. Um, and, uh, Amanda called Berna Bertha, which absolutely ended me. And that was necessary to raise. So, you know, it's a taste of, of what we're going to get to come with these people. If I was a betting woman, I would say Narice is going to welcome Olivia back if only because it will behoove her. And I think she'll know that Olivia feels bad enough to, to be loyal to her, at least on camera. That's my prediction, but we'll see. Yep, I think that's probably right. All right, a couple questions before we get to who's missing. Gregory Contreras says, who from this era could you see on season 50? I love this question. Ooh. Looking ahead 10 seasons from now. That is a very fun question. Um, I would say it would pro probably be either Horacio or Doris. I would lean towards Doris because I feel like Horacio is more likely to like, step away and do some other things. I could see Doris still uh chugging around uh you know 10 years from now or maybe less timing wise I, I feel like that might be the the pick yeah i'm looking at ages too right because harass those are two of yeah. the younger people the is 27 and Norris is 29 um so yeah i really actually think for a million reasons it's probably kyland even i throw in Horacio mm -hmm. and Norris at the top three maybe like Casey on an outside chance of just being like just still there. physical and around. But yeah, I think definitely those three are kind of like the future of this era. That's a fun um, question. And then for the CBS crossover people from Big Brother Survivor, like Casey, Josh, Michelle, et cetera, again, the Love Island US erasure, have they exceeded expectations? Exceeded expectations. I, I definitely wouldn't say they've exceeded expectations. Um, Met, I feel like I would go with Met to Below. Ooh. I would go Met to Below. So I think all six, right? If I count Love Island, so Olivia, Michelle, Polly, Josh, Kylan, and Casey, it's kind of a cheap answer. But to say by like by virtue of being cast on this season, and I think all of them deservedly so. I mean, maybe you could cut Polly, but I think there's like a huge case for him to be here. They've exceeded at least my expectations. I was certainly against like the Big Brother invasion. I didn't know how this was going to gel, how it was going to change the show. And I think almost all of them are better suited for the challenge than they were even suited mm -hmm. for Big Brother. And, you know, two of them won Big Brother and were all of them were good on their and, and one of them won Survivor and one of them won Love Island. So like mm -hmm. I, I think like the the CBS injection into the challenge, Ali Crowan has been the lifeblood of this last, you know, 10 years yeah. or 10 seasons of the challenge and has been absolutely essential to longevity of the show. And these six people in particular, I think have really delivered some memorable moments, be it athletic, be it drama, be it romance. So I, I think they've exceeded expectations. Okay. Um, who's missing though? Uh, speaking of expectations, let's look at the chart again. Thank you, Stuart. As you pointed out, uh, 
Uh, now, I will say the wins aren't based on the era. It's not like wins in in each era. So, like, mm -hmm. the older folks, it's easier to win in the older era, absolutely. But you also had more bites at the apple. Sure. The more seasons you were on. But, yes, the smallest window it's of incredible. people who have won. <laughs> it's, it's smaller and smaller. But I feel like... There only nine like, seasons to even win. But even, like, the era one people, I guess, outside of CT... All of them have won. I don't think anyone has won beyond era two. So I think most of them win in their their era. Just won beyond with the most. Well, I'd have to the, go to all the charts, yeah. which you know I don't have. I could sub the presentation. Um. Okay. So who's so, who's, so a, a lot of people here. Yeah. <laughs> canceled. Um. I think like Amber B is somebody you could talk about as a winner, someone memorable. So sort of like socially outcasted unfairly like you know talks about similar things kylan talks about like i think she could be in the mix i wouldn't like necessarily die to have her i think some of the bigger names missing are like fessel and cam yep. yeah fessel and cam would probably be the two in terms of like non-canceled names would probably be the two biggest the ones if like they were everyone was like a goody two shoes. I would love to see Kyle, but obviously that's long gone. Rogan, I'm still like unsure. Like, is he actually canceled? I don't really know. He's is he canceled? Okay. I don't know if he's canceled. I think I, I really don't know if he's canceled. I just think he's doing um other things. Not okay. that Polly hasn't done some of those things, but I, I don't know that he's like MTV would pick him up again right now. Not sure. But, but, the other name, I can't believe I'm going to say this, given like where I thought he was post his other season, but Corey Lay was like so fun on 39 that like if he had like another season and then there was 40, I could make a better case for him being on 40. But like he was a lot of fun on 39 and like really impressed me. So amazingly, I feel like he would be uh, fun if they wanted to like even swap him out for like Josh. Uh, yeah, so, like, you can make that swap. Just to get like the, instead of having four Big Brother people there, you can bring in, like Corey Lay um, as the, as the swap, and I it would have been like oh wow Corey's on the season, but honestly from thirty nine it would have, I mean he was as much a part of that season I guess like the notch below like the Norris Olivia Michelle trio, but like he was like the biggest star from the men outside of like Horacio and Kylan too. I just well, said yeah, outside of the like, problem. a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, outside of the people they cast. I think that's that's his issue, right? Yeah. It's like if Kylan goes out early, maybe Corey is in this conversation, but like you couldn't put Corey in place of Kylan and Horacio. Yeah. And I think you can't have three people from 39. Yeah. He needed more no's. Um, he needed like Kylan or Horacio to say no. And then like maybe uh Corey could have been in the mix. Um, I think also like I mean, Jay, like, I I'm fine, again, giving Jay fine. a break in service of Michelle yeah. off of the last season, but I think he's as much of a part of these last few seasons as anybody else. Put Jay um, on Survivor 50. Put him there and let Michelle uh, alert cook, on and cook on the for, Check out Millennials Gen X uh, conversation mm -hmm. with Mike Bloom to see if that happened. Um, okay, Mel and Big T. Go back. Yeah, go back. Let's see the, the list. Oh, sorry. I was because I'm just looking at who I'd replace. Mel yeah, yeah. and Big T, I think, also are people who I'm really fine not being on the season, but like Big T is probably someone who could have been here. Um, and then this is controversial. First of all, the fact that Lolo Jones is on this list is like amazing and hilarious. Just but looking through this list, I, I, I can spend hours reviewing the names that are like that are, are, are premiered in the third, like Tommy Sheehan and Bracco. I, I could I Gabo. I, I, Gabo. I, I, <laughs> I remember redhead Tommy being I could I could not believe Tommy the other Tommy was on this season before. That's crazy that he was on the challenge. Yeah. Uh he was with it's, um uh Annalise or Sis, whatever yeah. her name is. Somehow the less energetic Clark sibling, Kenny, that was a time. <laughs> the the infamous Gus. Like the right hand of this page is like one for the books. So one thing I'll say, I have two more people on my list that I made. Um, but looking at the chart, like Morgan Willett catches my eye as someone mm -hmm. who I believe was like not allowed to come back because bananas wouldn't let someone he was in the relationship with be on a season. And like maybe because since they broken up, Morgan just like that's his thing. I don't care. But like, wouldn't that be fun if like Morgan showed yeah. back up on a season with bananas? I mean, it would hit like 
I mean, she's writing the same book as like someone like Avery. Like she's, you know, probably contributed more, honestly. <sighs> um, and then here's just some fun picks. Well, I, I would actually for the UK women, and I think this team needs the muscle and the athleticism. So I'm fine with Jenny being here. But I would pick Zara over Jenny in terms mm -hmm. of like the UK women that have impacted my viewing of the challenge recently in this era. Um, and then why not have a little fun? Where's Emmy? Mm -hmm. Where's our alien? I, I would also like to point Where's out we've listed been? we've listed like I would say 15 names, 10 series, five in jest, and we did not list the person who won the season that like 39 was like building towards with Emmanuel. There's zero interest in bringing him back zero <laughs> um but i think we said this but we kind of glossed over it like i really think the biggest miss here is fessel like if i was fessel's friend i'd be like they really screwed you man like i almost hope he declined and i'm just gonna go back to the cast for a second like yeah is it is it the conversation fessel or josh and they just think josh is adding more personality or drama I mean, Fessel is a higher likelihood to be hooking up with people. I, I don't know. I, I think Fessel, Fessel should be Fessel sh should be on over all five of the guys. If we're being completely honest, I think if you like maybe like Carasio and Theo, like you can make the case Horacio and Theo are like they're a separate bucket because again, I feel like you needed the UK male contingent. So you have Theo, Horacio, you know, how big is like how how big his star has kind of grown, you can have him. But Fessel has been a much bigger star on the challenge than certainly Kylan and Josh. And I think if like and Pauly, Pauly was on the trajectory to being to that level, but only being on a couple seasons. So like if Fessel's on it and one of Kylan, Josh and Pauly aren't, how many people are being like, oh, my God, how is Fessel on it and not Kylan or Josh or Pauly? Like, I don't think anyone's saying that. Yeah, I think I think the problem is if you sub out Kylan for Fessel. Then you have Josh Fressel and Casey making up a third of this team. And I think that's very uninteresting. Sure. And if you sub Fessel for Josh, then I think you have an equity issue in terms of the strength of the teams. If this is a team challenge, if we think back to like the, the OGs in the uh, bejeweled era, whatever the angsty teens era, 1989, like maybe we have an issue if we have the youngest, most fittest guys on the team and Polly and Fessel who are athletes also. So like, maybe that's just what it is, is like they're, they need somebody sort of less physical on this team. And Fessel maybe. just kind of doesn't fit here. Maybe it, it, it just feel not to the degree, obviously that not having Wes on like era two feels like that's missing, but it does feel missing to not have Fessel for, for this era. And and I am sure Cam didn't declined, but I'd I'm sub sure. everybody but Narice. I would sub for I would sub Cam for. Yes, I agree. All right, let's get to the names. Um, I'm sure you have the Taylor Swift suggestion queued up uh, from a few days ago. Uh, I feel like this is Team CBS, honestly. But Mike Bloom says should be named something like Invasion of the Reality Shows. Season 31 was the first that brought in CBS contestants, and now the majority of this team are all from CBS, with only one coming from an MTV show. Alternate name for the team, Big Brother Sucks. Uh, Katie Williams says, Mike Blue, my second team, Big Brother Sucks. It's like Devin wrote this. Amanda Banken says, the newbies, or the noobs. Um... I don't know so about I, Taylor Swift albums. I don't I don't have a Taylor Swift album despite like the many days in between era three and era four recording that I could have um thought of one. But the the suggestion not the suggestion, the idea that that I had because this is kind of the international season, international in terms of people on like different shows, give a a, like a shout out to like some Parks and Rec brethren, do a uh, entertainment seven twenty, because they will go around the world twice for you. You know, I support your segment. I don't know that that's going to stick with just two people from the UK. So now I now I understand why you were like, "Look, this is so international. <laughs> it's like there's two people from the UK." <laughs> you got me. Um, but it's fun, and it is whatever you want. That's the beauty mm -hmm. of it. Um, I'm pulling up Taylor Swift albums really quick to see if we can name all of the eras, not officially, but just. Um, you'd think I'd watch enough like people making heels for their shoes to know this right. um okay so i think bad so sorry era one 
is did we have a suggestion in error three of what the who did you I say was like reputation? Oh, maybe I said era one was reputation because it's like yeah. the old, like literally the word era reputation. Um, I think. Bad so here's he, let me say names of let's say I'll say names of albums that could work and then you can apply them to the season. All right. Perfect. So okay. like uh, reputation, I think, is good. I mm -hmm. think. Honestly, folklore could be good for era one. Like, Ooh, folklore. I like that almost more than reputation. Reputation might be more era four. That would be interesting. Um, fearless could be one. Speak now, if anyone's yapping. Fearless could be two. I could see fearless being two. Um. Yeah. So okay. So is that enough? So folklore is era one. Era, era two is fearless. Era three is bad, bad blood. blood, and era four is reputation. Oh, yeah, I don't hate. All that. right, Swifties, let us know what you think. Obviously, there, I won't there, remember that any, either. Any other album? <laughs> or any, anything else? Any other albums? Yeah, I mean, there's a million other albums, but Nothing like Lover, 1989, Evermore, Red, Midnight's, uh, Speak Now. I said, um. Blah blah blah. What was the name of this album? Like Dead Poet Society or something? Like yeah, that? the Tortured Poets Department. I don't think so. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I All think right. I, like, I think so. Folk folklore. Um, we won't remember this though. I think the point for you was to like have something you could use. No, but no, no but I, I want to try. I'm saying it out loud because I want to try to remember. It was <laughs> okay. Go ahead. I'm writing it down. It was uh, folklore for era one. Um, Fearless era two. Bad blood era three. Reputation era four. Or, it, you know, I like Reputation better because it's like Battle for the New Champion, like whatever. Yeah. And they came in from CBS. They had a reputation, whatever. Yeah. Could be like Evermore, but that's a little more like eh, he-hum, yeah. ho-hum. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah. So we're going to be talking about the season at a whole. Well, I'll save the season for, for Mike Bloom. That's it. That's all you get. There you go. More you preview four. to come. You got four plus hours from us already. And the season hasn't even begun yet. So <clears throat> look out, folks. You can subscribe, Rob, his website.com slash challenge feed. Follow me on Twitter, Cohen Brian underscore. TikTok, challenge wrap ups. And the Facebook group, just to say it, join our Facebook group. Get all the fun stuff there. I follow you. Well, now I have nothing to say because you plugged the Facebook group. Give us five star reviews. Bring us, help us, you know, send, send the podcast to a friend when it comes out. Uh, let's get hyped for season 40. It was a lot of fun to dig in the preview. I'm even more and more hyped than I would normally be because we've made predictions. We've given names. We've talked it all out and there's more to come. Uh, we'll be back with Mike Bloom, uh, talking about episode zero. And in the interim, if you would like, you can check out me and Brian talking with Mike Bloom and I believe Shannon and Rob, but I'm not sure even though this has already happened. Uh, casting sure, a season it, it of Survivor. A, it was a great podcast. We had a lot of fun doing it. We're definitely talking about this as, as if it already happened in the past, because it did. It was great. We had a lot of fun. Everything I said on the podcast was right. But we're casting a season of Survivor in an era's theme. Maybe we'll give uh, the tribe names, album names also. Maybe we already did that. Who knows? But check that out on the RHAP feed. And we'll be back. Episode zero. Episode one and episode two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, probably 40 episodes for this season. Till then, have a good one.